Hey guys, it's Pete with Crunch Time Coaching and welcome to the second episode of The Fix. Today we have Lambert Farmer. What an awesome guy. Came for a couple of days. I really enjoy doing this, going deep with you guys and getting a lot of improvement. Now Lambert, he wanted to improve his topspin. He All right, so we are here with Lambert Farmer from Kentucky, right? Lexington. Lexington, Kentucky. And you came down here because you wanted to do what? I wanted to focus primarily on uh, getting top spin on my forehand. Top, period. Top spin on your forehand. Period. And why? Why? Because my method now of flat ball, you know, hitting the flat ball, is just not keeping it in consistently. And I figured it'd be a great weapon to go forward. With. All right. Cool. And, and did you feel like you started to get some top spin going? Yes. I, I got a couple of points that allows me to extend my body and keep my hand in a certain position and then brush up you know like a one two three getting ready to go uh -huh. which i didn't have before i just i'd go and i'd acrobatically get in position uh -huh. and hit it uh-huh yeah but now i'm more of a it's a technique that i have to really work on and and when you're doing it right what what would you say it felt like do you kept saying it well felt it felt like the... it, it's 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 effortless but it's weird uh -huh. for somebody that's 70 years old that's yeah. used to hitting you know just a flat you yeah. hear that sound and that on the strings and the ball yeah which is different yeah. let's get started and at the end of the video if you are interested in doing a fix with me a two-day fix with me then uh, check out what we have at the end of the video and maybe I'll see you on the court in 2018 let's get started All right, so b before we begin, let's take a look at where we started, just so you can kind of see some of the general habits that he was having. I see this from so many people who come to visit me. Number one is uh, he's not really using that offhand. I think that's a big deal. That gets you cramped. You can see that hand is kind of cramped, right? See how that arm is, is cramped in here? Can you guys see that? And then when he's getting ready to hit, then the ball comes in too close and is... His hitting arm is very cramped. We can see that the contact is well behind the body, and then he's hitting through. And, and one of his biggest complaints was that he wasn't getting topspin. We'll take a look at a couple more because that would probably be one of the shots that he would agree, like, yeah, that didn't feel good. Now, here is maybe a shot that's a little more what he would like to be doing. He's um, further away from the ball. He's got a good out in front contact point. But what we can see here too is his complaint in general was, I'm not really getting much topspin. Well, as you can see, as he's hitting that ball, how he is kind of scooping under the ball. Now, you don't really need a, a closed racket face on contact. It can be slightly closed or even, even, but it is tough to get topspin when you're starting to scoop under the ball. So he's not really brushing up and under the ball. He's scooping there and then hitting through. And as he follows through, we can see that the racket face is open big time right there, still open as it's coming up through here. And then he turns it over at the very end to where it starts to face more down. So that's what we started with. Let's take a look at how he step-by-step step started to change it around. So by the time he left, he was hitting some really nice toss spin. So the first thing I did is I brought over the toss spin Pro. Now, what I like about the toss spin Pro is it does not lie. You're either, you're either going to be creating spin with this thing or a little bit of spin or it's not going to be moving very much. You should be able to make this thing roll over consistently to where after you swing, if you don't hit another ball, it should be able to keep spinning for another anywhere four to seven, eight seconds. So I basically just said, go ahead, start swinging, and watch as he goes about it, and then we'll kind of analyze what's happening, and then we'll see him get uh, better and better with this. So interestingly enough, as you see him swinging to, you know, just watching it, the naked eye watching in real time, it, it looks like a nice swing, but 
uh, you heard him agree, or he shaked his head when I said we're not getting much rotation on that ball, and he kind of agreed. Well, well, as, again, we start to break this down in slow motion, we can see as he's approaching it, the racket face is up at contact on a number of times. Even though he's coming low to high, because that's open, he's just going to get minimal rotation on the ball. Here he comes again. We'll watch it again. Again, slightly open every time. Another thing is his wrist is not really laid back in a, in a strong position. It's a little bit turned in like that as opposed to really laid back to where he should be approaching the ball kind of straight. Uh, we'll see that in some other videos. You'll see how he's getting better with this. But uh, it's kind of bent too far forward this way, his wrist. Okay, He's doing what I call hiding the wrist. Watch it right here as he's hitting it. Again, it should be more laid back in a power position. And that is also hurting his chances at getting a lot of rotation. So he just keeps kind of swinging through the same way every time, slightly open. And what usually ends up happening as people <laughs> swing and they don't see that thing rotate, they do what most people do. And that was a little better, and we got a little more rotation there, if you can see that. But uh, overall, still not getting a lot of rotation. And what's interesting is as people have this happen, they just tend to start swinging harder and harder, thinking that that's maybe going to help them start to get rotation. And that's not the answer either. You can actually swing at this thing quite easily, relax, not too hard, and make that ball really spin. So we'll, we'll show you some exercises we started doing together to really get him to do that. And I think you guys are going to love it. Fortunately. Yeah. So what I want you to do is when you start doing this for a while, for you, because you really, look, the racket is an extension of your hand. So what you need to start doing is really start to feel the ball with your hand and make sure, and you got to really study what you're doing. Rather than coming up here and whacking this thing, you got to break it down right at contact and start gradually bringing it back with exercises. Once you do that, then you have a chance to build some muscle memory, feel the ball a lot more, and have it translated to a tennis match. Right now when you practice this thing, you're just coming and whacking the thing, right? So uh, what I want you to do is first of all, you see how you see this this right this right here? I imagine that's this right here. See that? That's that that's that. This is this my hand is a tennis racket. So I come here and I just start. Now, again, notice the angle of my hand right here. I just start feeling that. And, and I'm just going to do this for a little bit so I really feel it. I can't tell you how important feel is. People, you can watch instruction all day. You can get great tips. But until you feel it, you're not going to get it. So you just start to really feel the ball and feel like, what if my, what if my hands were strings? This is what I want to feel. And then once you feel that, you're going to do that. And again, here, there, okay? Start doing that. With my hand? Yeah, no rack. Oh, but now th this is east, semi-eastern, right? And then so, this is the semi -western. Yeah, there you go, you got the grips. Yeah, but I don't always get into it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's okay. not the issue. Though. Yeah, I know. Boom, okay, break it down. Sit. No, 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 oh. see, again. Yeah. See, this is where I, this is my, this is where I get particular. Yeah, let me move that rack. <laughs> so you walk right up and you start swinging at the thing. Yeah. You've got to be paid. I'm telling you, I want you to do this. See what I'm doing? Yeah. I'm not swinging. I want you to rock that thing back and forth. And then once you do it and you start to feel it, and take your time. Feel it. Don't be in a rush. Feel the ball. And you can do that. Hmm. Let me see. Go ahead. Uh uh. See? Going see? Too fast. No, no. See, look what you're doing. You're going like this. You went right away and you did this. Uh -huh. So what, What again, you've got to really get, You. I want you to start looking at a tennis racket. When you're looking at your hand, you're seeing a tennis racket. Okay. See? Okay. And so if you're doing this with a tennis racket, what might happen to the ball? Yep. What might happen? I'm, Look, not, I'm open. Yeah, it's going up. Yeah. And then if I turn it, see, so that's why you say, well, sometimes I do it good, sometimes I don't. Because yeah. when you're swinging so fast, sometimes if you're coming at it like this, sometimes you might turn it over in time and get tossed in. Other times you might be slightly too late and see the ball didn't move. That's exactly what I did. I don't know. <laughs> Duh. So look, so again, these are my straight, look how I angle my hand. Look at it, it's facing towards, look at the arrow going to the ground. 
this is what we need. Boom. Okay, good. Yeah, now you got it. There you go. And, and, and time out. No, notice how, see you're doing too much of this type stuff. I'm actually not, if you look at what I'm doing, my wrist is actually stabilized. See, I'm not going like, I'm, I'm doing not, a lot of wrist. You're doing a lot of this. Yeah. I'm doing, a lot of people think the wrist comes with the tossman. Look what I'm doing. My wrist is locked in. And then I. And when you hit it, too. And then when I right. hit Yeah, so it's so you laid back, it approaches. Lag. Right, and then there's no wrist really going on right now. I'm feeling the ball, there's feel in my hands. There's a difference between using your wrist and feeling the ball in your hands. I feel a lot with my hands. That's why we're doing this with the hands. And then when I go, boom. Try that. Okay. Very important. Uh, lock this in. Let's see, lock it in. Oh, okay. You're moving. You, I want you moving like this. See? Gotcha. Okay. See, lock it. In. There you go. That is much better. Now you understand what you're doing. There you go. Yeah. That's so, it. It's, so it's kind of like you see yeah. when somebody yeah. hits a good one. Yeah. They're they're like this. Yeah. Out there, and then they. Yeah. They, yeah. There you go. Now you're starting to get it. Then, good. And now what I want you to do now that you're starting to feel that when you let go, I want you to go more on the edge. Well, no, you're doing fine. This is good. You're doing a great job. Then I want you to go here. Okay. Let me see that. Make sure we're still filming. All right, you're starting, to, you're starting to use your wrist again. Oh, yeah. See that? Yeah. Oh, hell, that wrist has been part of me. See? Yeah. Okay, good. Can we tape it back? <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's perfect. That was great. So this is something you got to go home and do. Yeah. At least I know what to do. There you go. It's better. There you go. Good. There you go. You're getting it now. Good job. Nice. I mean, it's, it's natural. Yeah. To come like this. Yeah. There you go. When you're open. Yeah. It's like you said. I'm ending up. With the racket up here, and much like better. A scoop of ice cream. Much better. Good. Okay. Now here's your racket. I'm just going to demo what I want you to do, and then and then you'll do it. So uh, let me just take your spot. Angled mine. Yep. Just the same. Another thing I don't want you to do, and a lot of people naturally do this, they get their belly button right on the ball, and you tend to hit the ball late, right? So by getting your belly button right on the ball, yeah. look look what I'm practicing. See, does that look good? Very good. So watch how far I move back and back, double back, back this way, back that way. Watch this. See, this is how I want you to see. Now I've created the space because I'm not hitting with my hand anymore. Now I'm hitting with a racket. Now we've got the tool. But again, we got to make this like it's an extension of our hand. We got to feel. So we're here. You lock your, you're locking your wrist. Yep. Yeah, see that? Yep. Yeah. See? And then what I do, I just put the racket in my hand, edge slightly facing forward. Come to the ball. I like to start on the top of the ball and really feel it. Roll it down the string. So I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this happen. And again, I'm basically lifting the shoulder, doing a very slight move in the wrist, very slight, but it's mostly the shoulder going up and down. I'm feeling it in here and then there. Feel the ball. Start from the top every time. Roll it down the string. Start. Start from the top. Roll it down, go. Try that. So when you say start, top like here. Yep, start, 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 yeah, exactly. Right there, right there. Yep. yep, there you go. Yes, perfect. That was awesome. That was awesome. There you go. Have the wrist slightly laid down rather than up. Yeah. Then you'll hit on top of the ball. So there you go. Okay. And then move away from the ball a little bit in your body. Good. I take it. I take one more half step backward. There you go. That's right. Yeah. Good. That's nice. That looks awesome. See, I've not ever extended myself. Yeah. Feels, feels better. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I've That's never good. been this far in my life. Yeah. 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 And and right now what you're into is you're into your step. Yeah. You see. You should have more. I like I like to kind of sit up this way and then. 
be a little more even. If I turn this way, now it's on the I agree. I always try to keep my, my weight on the back. Foot. Yeah, so so if I'm seeing the ball, every time I get a forehand, I think about an open option forehand, meaning that if the ball comes super fast, I always set up this way. It's in a semi-open or full open move. And if it comes really fast, I don't have to step in. I can just pick it up. Yeah. If I got time, like I have time here, now the ball's a little further, we're pretending to stop there. That's where we're gonna hit. Then I would step in. So it's here to here. So just, just know that that's where you are. So you're doing good. A couple more. There we go. We just come right on the ball, just right on the ball, find it, top. Good. Good. Awesome. Let me show you the next step. You got it. So you starting to feel that? Yeah. Feel the ball as you're doing it. Very important. I put too much risk. I knew that, but yeah. I just didn't know what yeah. to how to, you know. And, what, and again, the important thing is you have one of these, so do this at home. I got these big things on. So yeah, so you can really, feel, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it makes you go. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. good. So you can really feel it. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is now we're going to be, so we just started. So what we do is we work our way back now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it about three inches away, right? Give or take. I'm not a mathematician, I teach tennis. So here we go. So I'm about three inches away, three to six maybe. And now I'm gonna start doing that. See that? Very slow, don't don't start going fast. Well see, I see that move when y'all on TV. But then mine's, like you say, jerky worky. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just cannot look. I said, that so, seems so simple. Yeah. But it, you know, yeah. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, so yeah. it's not as simple. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so you're just okay. Yeah, but but okay. notice ah, see see what you started to do yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah. So now we're there. Now all we gotta do is just go to it and go. That's right. Good. And you just back it a little off the ball. Just go a little further yeah. back. I'm saying bring your racket off the ball now, about three inches. Oh oh yeah yeah. 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 And yeah. then you're then you now just go to there you go. A little bit three inches good. Perfect. Again, I think that's good. You're doing a great job. But I would just, I would just start here and really study yourself. Make okay. sure, yeah, just stay there, and then, and then you can go. Good. There. Good, dude. Yeah, that's nice. Kind of went over this. You're doing fantastic. You're doing a perfect job. Oh, you went too far back. I don't want to be that okay. far back. Okay. You want to stay here for a while until you perfect it, until it starts to not feel so mechanical, but more automatic. And the more you do this every day, yeah, look at how much more of the ball is spinning than when we start. Yeah. That's okay. Time for it to open up. Good. 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 Yeah. How awesome is that? A lot that thing is spinning like crazy now. Great I job. Had that, I had that semi. I'm in between a semi western and a semi. So that was pretty awesome to see the ball spinning like that when you consider where we started. And then I just wanted to bring a close up of the ball as he's hitting this, just so you can see how that ball just keeps rotating, spinning. The big difference, and with each spin. It's got a compounding effect. That uh, compounding effects the ball does keep spinning, and uh, it's just really awesome to see how far we've come. Look how long that ball keeps going. After that, we're even giving each other a high five, and the ball is still moving. So it goes to show how much progress we can make without actually hitting a tennis ball. In fact, what I'm going to do is show you how we even got even more professional looking. The next day when we got on this thing, and then once we started hitting balls, how he is picking this up right away and made a real total transformation here just in a couple of days of us working together. It was so rewarding to work with a guy like this. He was really awesome. So we'll be right back with that clip. So now, as you can see, as we got deeper into our training, that Lambert was starting to buy in way more on how much to use the body from when he first came. Look how low he's getting. And the non-dominant arm, really awesome stuff. And uh, 
and you can see a big difference in his appearance. I, I was joking with him. I was saying, you know, by, by the end of this, you're starting to look like a darn teaching pro. And look how he's coming up and through that. So, And that ball, as he's walking away, guys, is still spinning, spinning, spinning. So here we are taking a look at Farmer at the end, and you can see a total transformation. Look at that unit turn, first of all. Beautiful unit turn. Look how he's using that offhand. I was telling him, you look like a darn teaching instructor now. Plenty of spacing. The spacing's beautiful. Look at him come up through that ball, put the roll on it, and a perfect follow-through. Comes through and does this again, back-to-back -back beauties here. Point out to the ball. Got the teaching instructor look, if you ask me. <laughs> Look at that. Does it get any cleaner and prettier than that? And uh, that's what we were able to accomplish in just a couple of days. So um, I just want to thank him so much for coming out. If you guys are watching this on YouTube and you're interested in coming out and doing some hands-on training with me, then what you can do is right here in the card section, you can click that and go to a page. They are limited spots. Also in 2018, the pricing will probably be going up a bit. Uh, just because I just don't have much time to do this. I would love to do it every day, but uh, we got so many projects going on in 2018 that the one-on-one -on -one training will be limited. Um, but you can take your spot right now and click and fill that out. But uh, it was awesome. Wanted you guys to see that. That's the fix number two. If you have any questions or comments on the forehand and how we got there, you comment below this video. I will do my best to respond to everybody's comments. Make sure to give this a thumbs up. If you like this instruction, it would help us out a great deal if you thumbs up this video so more test enthusiasts can see this video and our channel. And subscribe if you've never seen one of our videos before. Or if you have seen our videos and you don't want to miss any in the future, make sure you subscribe. All right, take care. This is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching. That's the end of fix number two. We'll be back with another one soon.